I'm going to share with you thoughts today about ways to reduce your stress level, beginning with laughing. We start with laughter because like last month, when I was here, I wrote a title and a description of the sermon, and I sent it to Janice. Now, Janice, she's the person that does more than probably all of us combined around here. And she has a magic, easy bake oven. She puts my title and description into this magic sauce. And then she mixes it with the batter and puts it in the easy bake oven. And just for a few minutes, then it comes out on the other side with a finished product, a new title and a better title. This always comes as a surprise to me because I have written my sermon to fit the title that I originally sent to Jan. And just like dressing, tailoring a dress to fit someone, you take in some here, you let out a little bit here until it just fits perfectly. That's how my sermons are. My title was Reduce Your Stress. And the easy bake oven title that came back to me was too much pressure, which I rather liked more. So here we go with too much pressure. I want to share with you today thoughts about ways to reduce your stress and pressure level. I want you to walk away today feeling that you are in charge of how much stress you have in your life and you can manage it. You have this divine power inside of you where you can manage your pressure and design your life. The first time I heard this concept of stress management was probably about 35 years ago um, when I was working at a psychiatric hospital for women. And I was having a session with a patient there, and she said to me she had to hurry up and end our session because she wanted to get to stress management on time. And so she left. And that made me laugh because she sure was stressed about getting to that stress management class on time. Well, I, that was the first time I heard of it, and I didn't really know what it was. So I went with her, and I said, um, okay, what is it? I had never heard of it before, but I liked it a lot because we laid on the floor. We closed our eyes. We took in a deep breath and held it and then slowly let it go. And we did it again. But this time, we took in a deep breath, closed our eyes, and we thought of a peaceful place that we could be. We exhaled and repeated. So let's do that together. Breathe in deeply. Close your eyes and think of a peaceful place to be and exhale and repeat. Stress refers to your body's reaction to challenges and demands. Everyone experiences stress. I just want you to know that. And it can be triggered by all kinds of events from small daily hassles, like having a boss I don't really like, to major hassles and um, changes in our lives like a divorce or a job change. The stress response includes physical changes components, such as an elevated heart rate and uh, elevated blood pressure. 
and it includes thoughts and personal beliefs about the stressful event that just happened, plus emotions, including fear and anger. Although we often think of it as being negative, stress can also come from positive changes in our life, like getting a promotion at work or having a new baby or moving. The question then becomes not how not to have stress, but how do we handle stress in a healthy way? It's coming and we might as well prepare for it. However lengthy exposure to stress may lead us to mental health difficulties like anxiety and depression or increased physical health problems like heart problems. So it's important to be aware of what the stressors are in your life and to manage them, to ramp them down, not up. And how do we do that? Well, as you know, I'm a big proponent of being careful of what we say to ourselves, our self-talk. That is what we say to ourselves matters. So with stress and stressful events, make sure and rewrite the story. Write it in your favor. For example, one of my clients was let go over the Christmas holidays, which I thought was crummy. But when I saw her after that, she was very happy. I asked her what she was doing, what was going on. And she said she had just gotten fired last week. And it was perfect because she never really liked working at this job anyway. She said to me, my new job is going to be filled with people my age, a fun atmosphere, and people with great work ethic. I asked her if she had gotten that new job yet. And she said, well, no, she hadn't, but it won't be long. And sure enough, two weeks later, she got hired by Starbucks and was moving to Seattle. She was thrilled. She said, I told the universe that I needed something new and better. And here it is. The pay is 20% higher than what I was making before. And it's something that I'm really good at in accounting. It should be really fun. And it is. I keep up with her now via Skype. And she is so happy to be in this new city new house, and a new job. Her boyfriend decided to move to Seattle with her as well. I have a feeling I'm going to be going to Seattle soon for a wedding. All because she changed the story from letting getting laid off be this horrible thing that ruined her life to getting laid off was just what she needed. And she was grateful for it. I have come to re- write the story, no matter how badly things go for me. For example, when I was given too much anesthesia last month before Christmas, I rewrote the story in my favor. I know what it feels like now to have dementia and um, Alzheimer's. The difference though is I got to come back. I got to get my memory back. But knowing what it's like not to have it was very instructive. I know what it feels like to have dementia now or Alzheimer's. And I know it makes me a better therapist and a more compassionate soul. This helps me understand what my mother goes through sometimes when she just can't remember something. And she's so sad about it, which makes me love her even more. So rewrite the things that are happening to you in your favor. I use this technique all the time because it works great. I have found if you can see the light, it's a lot better. Look for another angle to what's happening to you. Look for the light. I'm here to tell you, we each have the power to do that, including you. It will reduce your stress both emotionally and physically. A lot of what I will share from here out on the service today is taken from the Cleveland Clinic's website. 
though it could have been taken from many other places too. I just looked up stress management on the internet and found page after page after page of instructions and thoughts and ideas about how to manage your stress. At one point, I skipped ahead 10 pages and I was still in the middle of the thoughts and ideas about stress and stress management. So if you have stress issues, I mean, we all have stress issues, but if you have serious anxiety or stress issues where you can't take one more straw or the back will break, go after it on the internet. There's so much information there, so much you can learn and get rid of that stress. Don't let yourself get stuck in overwhelming anxiety. Do something about it. There's much to learn on the internet for free. To begin with, pretty much every website I went to suggested to op optimize your health by what you eat and what you drink and what you don't eat and what you don't drink. Some people try to reduce their stress by eating junk food and lots of it. Others try to reduce their stress by drinking alcohol or caffeine. These things may all work in the short run but they will actually add to your stress for your uh, brain and your body in the long run. Now, I know you've heard this before, but here it is again. I'm saying it because it's true. Consuming a healthy, balanced diet can help ramp down any stress that you are carrying. The second thing they recommend, and I bet you can guess what it is, is to exercise regularly. Exercise not only has great health benefits, it also is a great stress reducer. Even walking, get yourself a Fitbit. You can snap it onto your waist first thing in the morning, same as I do, and see if you can make it to 10,000 steps that day. You can start out trying to make it to 2,000 or and then 5,000. Work your way up and you will find your stress will be working its way down. You are so worth it. Do something to reduce your stress. Don't wait until you have a heart attack and you are medically instructed that you have to do something. You can do it now. The next recommendation is also a no-brainer, but one that is necessary to say out loud. Stop using tobacco and nicotine products. People who use nicotine often refer to it as a stress reliever. However, nicotine actually places more stress on the body by creating an addiction and reducing blood flow and breathing. Unfortunately, for any vapors who are listening this morning as well, vape is the same way, very stressful on your body and you have to be willing to stop. A third thing on all of the hundreds of websites about stress management is to learn and practice relaxation techniques. You can choose from a variety of techniques, such as deep breathing, imagery, progressive muscle relaxation, and mindfulness meditation. Let me say a word about progressive muscle relaxation. It's one that I use often. If you're having trouble going to sleep, start by laying flat on your bed, on your back, with your eyes closed. Now starting with your toes, tense them together. Hold and then relax them. Do it for each foot separately. Next, tighten and relax your ankles. Then your shins, the front part of your lower leg, and then your calves, the back part of your lower leg. Tighten them, then release. Go all the way up your legs, tightening as you can, and then letting go. Each time you let go of that part of your body, imagine it sinking into the mattress, perfectly relaxed. Go up your leg to each of your knees, then your thighs and your hips, and one side at a time. Then you need to tighten your stomach 
and abdomen. Hold and release. Keep on going up your body by filling your lungs to full capacity. Hold them for a second, maybe two, and then exhale. Each time you let go, sinking that part of your body into the mattress. Keep going. Your chest, your lungs, your shoulders, your neck, even your face. Scrunch it up. Scrunch, 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 scrunch tight. And then release and relax your head into your pillow or mattress. This is a very simple exercise, but it will get rid of a big chunk of stress that you may be carrying around. Squeeze it, hold, relax into your mattress and pillow, saying, goodbye stress. I let go of the stress in my body. Hello sleep and relaxation. Reduce the triggers of your stress too. If you are like most people, your life may be filled with too many demands and too much, little time, at least mine is. For the most part, you have to realize that these demands are ones we have chosen, ones we have signed up for. You can free up time by practicing time management skills like asking someone for help when you need it, setting priorities, pacing yourself, practicing saying no, and reserving time to take care of you. Next comes the you, you part. Examine your values and make sure you are living by them. The more your actions reflect your beliefs, the better you will feel, no matter how busy your life. Use your values when choosing your activities. Otherwise, you will absolutely increase your stress. Three more ways to reduce your stress are this. Number one, I find this really important, is learning to assert yourself. Learning to say no when the answer is no. I promise you, the sky will not fall. It is so powerful to learn to say, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Or I would like to but I just don't have time in my schedule right now for that. Secondly, set realistic goals and expectations for yourself. Be mindful of the things you have time and energy to do and learn to accept the things that you don't, that you have no control over. It's okay to let go of things and not get them done. Let me say that again. It's okay to let go of things and not get them done. You would give that permission to someone else, wouldn't you? Why not give it to yourself? And lastly, sell yourself on yourself. When you are feeling overwhelmed, remind yourself what you do well. And know this, nobody does it all well. You have strong points, you have weak points just like the rest of us. Relax into knowing this truth. There's nothing wrong with you when you don't get everything quite right. It makes you normal and human. Give yourself grace, just as you would a friend or a child. You're so gentle with them. Learn to be gentle with yourself by practicing. For example, this past Wednesday afternoon, I got a call to reschedule an appointment on Thursday at one o'clock. Well, as luck would have it, about the same time, I had another client call and asked for that exact same time, Thursday at one o'clock. So I booked him in on FaceTime since he lives in Kansas. So Thursday comes and I see all of my regular clients straight through from 8 a.m. to 1 o'clock. But when I finished at 1 o'clock, I just went home thinking I was done for the day. At about 1.30, my client FaceTimes me and says, what happened? I thought you were going to FaceTime me at 1. Well, I thought so too. This was as I was as surprised as he was, but I have no memory of agreeing to meet him at 1. Well, 
I hadn't written in my calendar, which I always do, but I never did. And I never thought of it again until he called. Luckily, he is someone I have worked with on and off for years, and he gracefully forgave me. He knew this wasn't my typical behavior, and he rescheduled for next Tuesday. This is what you have to do for yourself. Gracefully forgive yourself. Know this is not your best typical behavior and reschedule if you forgot something. And I want you to notice while you're doing all this that the world will keep turning. The sun will keep rising. It's not the end of the world if you make mistakes. Now, Healthline.com tells us how to get rid of our stress fast. The number one thing is exercise. Exercise is the most important thing you can do to combat stress. I went to over 100 websites looking for answers, and they all said this. Exercise, exercise, exercise. Go up and down the stairs at work one extra time each day. Go to Target after work and walk up and down the aisles back and forth, back and forth. Go to the park and ride your bike around the lake. It doesn't matter what you do. It only matters that you do it. Number two, back to healthline.com. Simple and fast ways to get rid of stress and anxiety. One of them is consider supplements, but be careful with those. Like Xanax reduces stress for sure but it is also highly addictive. So take it only in emergencies. Some of my clients, in fact, keep a Xanax or half a Xanax in their wallet or purse to use in an emergency and have found they never use it. Instead, just knowing that they have it then, and, they, and they don't want to use it they now are practicing going through high anxiety things without a med, but feel calmer just knowing that they have it with them just in case. You're allowed to use that technique too. Use only as needed, only in an extreme emergency, and you too may find just having it in your pocket is enough to keep you from actually going into a panic attack. Another stress reliever for many people is lighting a candle. Pick one that smells good. Some final thoughts, reduce your caffeine intake, chew gum, spend time with friends and family, especially little ones, and finally, laugh. Laugh out loud. I wanna do a shout out for Jimmy Dunn, who sends emails out each week that make us laugh. There's always something each week that makes me chuckle. And I say, thank you, Jimmy. This week, I particularly like the winter clothing for kids video. Kids having to put on sweaters because their moms are cold. Or itchy sweaters because their moms got them on sale. Or matching sweaters with their siblings because their moms got those on sale too. Thank you, Jimmy. You make me laugh. I really do think laughter is the best medicine to take the stress away, especially learning to laugh at ourselves. In closing, I would like to end today's sermon by reading a quote by Donna Ashworth in her brilliant book called The Right Words. The writing is entitled One Tiny Step. Go one tiny step at a time, my friend. Do not pressure yourself to be perfect or put this on your list of worries in life, there's actually no space for that. May it be so. Blessed be and amen.